In this video, we're going to talk about how to configure Active Directory Authentication, or User ID, on the Palo Alto Firewall. This can be used for a lot of situations. For instance, when you see event logs in on the Palo Alto, by having User ID enabled, you're able to track which user accessed certain websites or applications, as opposed to just simply an IP address. Now there's a lot of steps that are necessary here for this to work properly. Uh, the first step that I'm going to do is configure what's called the service route. Uh, service route is there in order to allow us to specify which interface of the Palo Alto we want it to use to be able to perform the Active Directory authentication on. Uh, by default it will try to use the management interface, but this is not always the best option. The next item that we're going to do is we're going to configure the zone to enable user ID or UID here. Uh, that's just to specify which zones we want to enable user ID on as opposed to the other zones. Uh, then we will configure an LDAP server profile, which will point to our Active Directory domain controller. And then we will configure user ID. Uh, I user ID group mappings to specify which groups we want to include in our uh, in our mapping or our Active Directory authentication, and then lastly we will configure the firewall agent. So there's a lot of steps here in order to get this going. So let's jump on in. Like I said, the very first step we're going to do here is configure the service route. And if we look at our network diagram, in my network both the management network and this network right here are the same. However, that's not the case in most cases. What I want is I want all of my Active Directory authentication to go out that interface. So I want to configure this guy right here, which just happens to be Ethernet 1 slash 2 to be my destination for that. So we jump into our Palo Alto here and let me zoom in just a little bit. And I want to configure the service route configuration. And so that is under device, setup, services, and then service route configuration. By default, it says use the management interface for all of them. I want to customize this and change that for a couple of different protocols. Uh, so I'm going to specify LDAP. Uh, I want to change the source interface from the default down to Ethernet 1-2 and I can see the IP address associated with it. So, okay. And then I also want to change the UID agent right down here, again, to ethernet one slash two. And okay. So now that everything will be going out that interface, let me actually commit that just to confirm that all the traffic going through that interface is working. And all right. Uh, so the next step I want to do is I want to configure user ID on the zone. Uh, this is on the network zone, so that's going to be under network. And then on the left hand side, we choose zones and we choose the zone that we want to enable user ID or that we want to perform user ID authentication on. And that's going to be my inside zone. Uh, enabling it is really easy. Just come up here and check the checkbox right here. Normally you will be configuring this on your inside zones, but there may be a situation where you want to configure it on your outside zone. Uh, your situation may differ. All right, now we need to configure the LDAP server profile. Uh, the LDAP server is under device. On the left hand side, if we scroll on down here, we see a section called server profiles and one of them is called LDAP. This is where we actually start configuring our domain controllers. So I'll go ahead and add. Uh, profile name, I'm just gonna call this lab.local since that's the name of my domain. And then the server list I will add, and let's see, this will be DC1 of my domain, and the IP address, IP or, F or DNS name, uh, 192.168.1.20. Uh, server settings, the type is Active Directory. 
the base DN is going to be DC equals lab, comma, DC equals local. Uh, you may need to research exactly how to write those. It's DC equals, DC equals, um, yeah. And then the bind DN is the user who is logging in here. Um, this is gonna be in the UPN format, so it's gonna be lab user ID is the user ID I've created for this at lab.local and their password. Last thing I want to do is right up here, I see that this is trying to run on port 389, which is standard LDAP. Uh, but then down here it has a checkbox that says require SSL, which is not port 389. That's actually, I want to say 636. I may be correct, maybe incorrect. 3380, something like that. So I'm going to uncheck this and say OK. And just to confirm, I'm going to go back in. And at this point, where it says the base DN, I should be able to click this drop down and it should pre populate for me. You see here how it's already put in a DC equals lab, DC equals local, except this time the DCs are capitalized. That's just the proper way the Active Directory does it. So I'm going to choose that just because it looks prettier and then say OK to commit or to save that. Next thing I want to do now that I have my Active Directory profile is I want to configure my group mapping or specify which groups I want to map in my Palo Alto. Uh, still on the device tab on the left hand side, we scroll up to see user identification. And then in all these tabs, we move all over to the right and there's a group mappings section. Again, I will click add. Uh, just go ahead and call this lab.local, sure. Uh, server profile, go ahead and specify the profile we just created. And then the group include list. If we did this correctly, when I click the little arrow here on the left hand side, it should branch open, start showing me all the OUs and all the users. I'm gonna go ahead and just specify domain users and then click plus in order to move it over to the included groups. Now the group mapping here is basically saying everybody who's in this group will be included in the mapping process. I'm just gonna blatantly say domain users. That should get everybody that I am concerned with for the time being. There's reasons why you want to change that which we will talk about it later in another video. So now that I've got the group mapping, now we need to configure the firewall agent. So the way the Palo Alto works is it actually logs in to the domain controller or to the LDAP servers and starts looking through its event logs and other history in order to see who is where on which IP. So we need to configure that and that's under the user mapping sub tab here, still under user identification, user mapping. And here we see the user ID agent setup. So click the gear icon. And here we start off by specifying the username. This can be the same user as what we did with the LDAP server profile, except this time it's in domain slash user format. So for instance, lab.local, backslash lab dash user dash ID. And then again, the password. All right, uh, next thing we want is server monitor and we want to enable the security log. So this will actually log into the Windows server and it will look through the security log to see when people have logged in on which devices. Uh, client probing, this will try to probe the clients to see who's logged in. We'll leave that disabled. Uh, and then cache timeout, uh, if you're running DHCP, you want to enable a user ID timeout so that when an IP address changes on a device, this will time out on its own and then be reset later. If you're not running DHCP, you could uncheck that. And okay. All right, so now that we've set this up to be able to log into the domain controllers, we still need to tell it which domain controllers to log into. So if we scroll down just a little bit, we see a server monitoring section. We'll click add. 
and here we specify our server that we want to log into. Specify DC1, 192, 168, 1.20. Okay, and commit. Uh, if you have multiple DCs in your environment for that server monitoring, you would want to include all of them so that it will monitor all of them uh, and make sure that it captures all the logins for all the users. When this finishes, uh, what we're looking for here is that the status over here on the right for server monitoring should change to connected. And there we go, connected. So I'm going to go ahead and log off. And I'm logging off specifically because the login is what helps trigger the mapping between the user and the password, or uh, the user and the IP address. So I've logged off, I've logged back in, uh, just open up a web browser and I will log back into the Palo Alto. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and just go to google.com. Just generate some traffic. All right, so now that we've gone ahead and we've set up Active Directory Authentication or User ID and I've logged off and logged back in, I generated some traffic over here by clicking on Google. Now we should be able to, on the firewall, to be able to click on the Monitor tab and our traffic should be mapped to a user ID. Uh, I do have a filter in here saying, hey, look specifically on this machine. And we can see right here, lab slash lab dash user is the one who's initiating this traffic. I just logged in as lab dash user and so we can see yes I was actually the person initiating this traffic. So there you go. Now I can look through my event logs and see exactly what's been happening. If I see an issue happening on my environment instead of trying to track down which IP address it might be I can now use the username in order to track down which user was affected and then more effectively resolve their issues.